Pick up the security clearance issues tonight with attorneys Victoria Tensing and Joe DeGeneva. Another round of Trump-endorsed candidates scoring big victories in their primary election contest, while rhino never-Trumpers find themselves roundly rejected by Republican voters. And who even knew anti-Trump pro-establishment Tim Pawlenty was running again for the GOP gubernatorial nomination in Minnesota? Perhaps too many. Fox political analyst Ed Rollins has the latest for us tonight on the red wave swelling ahead of these midterms. And New York's left-wing governor appears to have lost his way in the midst of his re-election campaign. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. <laughs> the governor obviously doesn't know his audience. Governor Cuomo's controversial comments suggesting he's lost his mind and is running to the left of himself. But his PR folks quickly trying to clean up his politically explosive mess. All about that and much more straight ahead. Our top story, President Trump says the Republican Party has the team needed for a red wave in November's midterms. President Trump celebrating wins last night from, among others, his endorsed candidates, Pete Stauber for Minnesota's 8th Congressional District and Scott Walker for Governor of Wisconsin. Also of note, Trump critic and former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty lost in his upset bid. He lost to Jeff Johnson for the Republican nomination to be governor of Minnesota. All of this is the Cook Political Report placed three more House seats held by Republicans in the toss-up category. The Cook map now has 37 seats. 37 held by Republicans as toss-ups and making it appear there is an impending blue wave. But in actuality, Republicans backed by the president have been winning throughout the primary season and are poised to do so again in November. Republican voters would like to see House Majority Whip Steve Scalise apparently succeed Paul Ryan to be Speaker of the House. That according to a new Morning Consult Politico poll. Scalise receiving 18% support. House Freedom Caucus co-founder uh, Jim Jordan receiving 11%. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy receiving 9%. And joining us now, the top strategist, Great America PAC, uh, former Reagan White House political director, Fox political analyst, Ed Rollins, great to have you with Thank us. Thank you. Nice to be uh, with you. You and the president doing very well yesterday. Well, the critical thing here is we now have some great candidates. We have to go win these races. Democrats have shown they can raise money. They have a very diverse group of candidates, uh, everything from the first transsexual candidate running for governor of Vermont to, to Muslims to, to what have you. And, and, and in some cases, that's going to energize. In some cases, it's going to turn people off. But they are basically got money, and they basically have candidates everywhere, and we have to go out and win these races, and we've got good candidates that can do that. Uh, and obviously, uh, there were very few surprises uh, on the Republican side right. or, or the Democratic side. Uh, it's, it was an interesting uh, set of primaries, don't you think? A lot of money spent, uh, uh, particularly in a place like Wisconsin, the Senate race, uh, yeah. and, and, and other places. We've got to make sure we have there will be sufficient money for, for all the competitive races in the future. Now, we have to go win them. That's, I keep coming back to that. Uh, uh, the, 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 you get no wins out of the primary. You get good candidates out of primaries. You've got to go win them in November. That Wisconsin race, uh, it, it was interesting. Uh, Kevin Nicholson, uh, in, right. not surviving uh, against the establishment. Uh, uh, choice there in, in Wisconsin. Were you surprised? Uh, well, I was. I, I, my packet had supported, like most of the conservatives, had supported Nicholson. But what it was was Scott Walker and the Republican organization. With Scott Walker has built a very strong organization there. Right. Turned out in turn for uh, the, the woman who won the won the, pro the process. And I, you're now going to have two two candidates. The key thing here, I think, is we don't have a single Democrat down under yet in the base Democrats, and we've got to go get. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say that again. We don't have a single Democrat of the 25 that are up for re-election that we can say are automatically ours. We've got to go win these races. There are eight or ten that we have shots at, three or four real good shots at, including Baldwin uh, yesterday, and we've got to go win them. I keep, I keep coming back to that. We've got 80-some-odd days to go. Well, the it, campaign's just beginning. It's great when you say you've got to, you got to win them, uh, but the, you've got Paul Ryan, who's not trying to win. He's trying to manage a rhino uh, uh, rear guard action so that he keeps those rhinos in place uh, for the benefit of the Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable, the Koch Brothers, Wall Street, you name it.
You have a very full agenda that Trump has put out there, and candidates should be running and talking about tax cuts, immigration reform, those kinds of things. The tendency of the Washingtonians... You mean the achievements of President Trump? Of President Trump. There's always a tendency to run against Nancy Pelosi or to call them all liberals. That doesn't mean a whole lot to most voters out there. Most, Especially when you've got all these socialists suddenly on the scene. Absolutely. Most, most voters out there say, what are you going to do for me? Do you understand what's going on in my thing, and my district? And equally as important, there's a great agenda to run on now, and they need to be running on that agenda. Well, you know, you and uh, Bernie Sanders agree, uh, Ed. Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders calling Republicans intellectually bankrupt for attacking Nancy Pelosi. Uh, you know, Republicans are the ones who want her to stay in place. He's being a little uh, intellectually uh, He's, uh, agile here. Well, she's, she's very much in his camp. I, my, my argument is we have battered her and battered her and battered her over the last several elections. We need to go out and make it a positive effort. You of ought our to be candidates. writing a check to her campaign for crying. Well, I agree with that. And the more she's out there, the more uh, detrimental she is. I wouldn't spend one penny running an Nancy Pelosi campaign. I would try and have her on as much as like here. But at the end of the day here, we've got good, good, uh, good things to run on. And there's a good enthusiastic you know, yeah. Republican base. You know, what you're saying seems so obvious that it, it, it should overwhelm <laughs> everyone, uh, everyone in the Republican Party. We've got record low Absolutely. Uh, un unemployment. We have a, an economy that is just blazing ahead, the Trump economy. Markets are also moving uh, strongly ahead, uh, secure. Uh, and this manufacturing is resurgent. The economy is doing everything one could ask under this president. And, and why would there be even an issue about embracing the Trump agenda if you're a Republican in the House or the Senate? I don't care which. Uh, well, there shouldn't be. Not, 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 election not, not only that, the, the president's at a 50 percent approval rating now, which is a very strong place to begin a, an off-year election. Uh, so my sense is everything's there. We just have to go execute. 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 Now, that sounds like a political strategist if I've ever heard what. Or How about just grab that agenda and just beat the absolutely. beat the hell out of the Dems? <laughs> well, you can do that. They have, no, they have no agenda. Their agenda is so far out the uh, left, uh, and that's what we need to talk about. I think that may be a very uh, strong element in favor of the Republicans this time. Uh, running to the left, I mean, Andrew Cuomo running to his left without even opposition. Really. We're saying the country's never been a great place. Oh, isn't that something? Right. Ed Rollins, Thank good you. to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks so much. Breaking news tonight. The Securities and Exchange Commission is formally requesting information from Tesla about its so-called plan to go private. And CEO Elon Musk unverified claim that he has funding secured. It looks as though he did not. Tesla's stock down more than 2% at the close today, down slightly in after hours trading. And up next, President Trump pulling former CIA Director John Brennan's security clearance. We take up the White House decision. Victoria Tensing and, and Joe DeGeneva join me right after this break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. President Trump declared three weeks ago that his administration would be reviewing the security clearances of six intelligence officials who have escaped the consequences for misdeeds. Mr. Trump following through with his promise. The list has grown. The Trump administration today announcing it is reviewing clearances for the following nine deep state actors. Former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, former FBI Director James Comey, former CIA Director Michael Hayden, former Acting Attorney General Sally Yates, former National Security Advisor Susan Rice, fired FBI Director Andrew McCabe, and disgraced FBI officials Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, top DOJ official Bruce Orr. One would think, and many have thought, that being fired uh, or serving in a previous administration might be just enough to automatically end any security clearance. But this club, this exclusive club has maintained a high level of uh, tenacity for their prerogatives despite blatant bias, disloyalty, and assaults on the president. Joining us now, Victoria Tensing, Joe DeGeneva, the founding partners of the DeGeneva and Tensing Law Firm. It's great to have you with us, and let's start with Strzok uh, being fired uh, it now means that the top of the FBI has certifiably been fired uh, and moved on, demoted uh, for their for actions that are just outside the, the the responsibilities of their office and assaulting this president. In point of fact, Victoria, your thoughts 
on what we have now witnessed at the FBI? Well, it was well-deserved, Lou. I mean, there's a thing in the law called res ipso locator, and it means the thing speaks for itself so the patient doesn't have to show negligence if the scissors are still in him after the operation. Well, look at what we have from Strzok. We have his vile animus expressed in all his texts. We have him declaring in his texts that he has a plan to stop Trump. And then, lo and behold, we have him stop, trying to stop Trump by opening up a counterintelligence investigation based on this dossier that's been discredited, uh, paid for by the Democrats. The thing speaks for itself. He, we don't need to go into any more angst about his motives. They're there, right there. Joe, the... the the, the clearance today being revoked for John Brennan. Yes. Uh, do you have any objections or do, you, or do you think perhaps there should be far more uh, Obama officials who will have their security clearances lifted? This is a glorious moment for the country. Uh, an evil man has lost something that he's not entitled to. John Brennan is the worst CIA director in the history of this country. He betrayed his country by means of the plot against uh, President Trump, which he was the leader of, involving Comey and Yates and others, uh, Stroke, uh, Page, all of the people at the FBI. And let's remember, Lou, uh, everybody that was on the list of nine that you gave should have their clearances revoked. And I hope that the, re the revocation of Brennan's clearance today is a signal that they are starting to move toward the declassification of all the documents that we want to see to show just how corrupt the Obama, FBI, and DOJ really were. The chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunes, has called for those uh, uh, that uh, lifting of the class of, uh, classification uh, of those documents. Uh, you're saying that you believe the White House is moving on that uh, request now? I believe that very sincerely. I know that this has been under consideration for some time, and the fact that they revoked John Brennan's clearance today, to me, is a sign that they are now moving toward the realization that as a public duty, they must declassify all of those documents so that the American people can see exactly the array of evil people who were lined up against this president, both as a candidate as an interregnum, and finally after his inauguration. This is the greatest law enforcement, intelligence, and political scandal in the history of this company, country, and it needs to be fully exposed. And they should also declassify all the FBI texts that are, were at issue, McCabe's and, right. and all of Strzok's, and also Bruce Orr's. We want to know a lot more about Bruce Orr. And, and now with the firing of Strzok and, and uh, this declassification mm. that it's underway, and, and frankly, I, I will be amongst those cheering loudly, because this, this administration uh, has both the opportunity to be the most open and transparent in American history. Uh, it also has the opportunity to uh, advance the cause of justice and bring consequence uh, and punishment to evildoers, uh, as you say. Uh, to, to look at uh, Mark Warner, Senator Warner, uh, his reaction today, and I'd like to just read this, uh, share this with our audience, uh, if we could put that up. I guess to me this had an eerie memory of an enemies list. Smacks of Nixonian type practices of trying to silence anyone that is willing to <laughs> criticize the president. That puts us again in unchartered territory, said the illustrious <laughs> vice chair who's been running the Senate Intelligence Committee just because uh, Richard Byrd, the Republican right. chairman, yeah. abdicated. Uh, yeah. it, it, your reaction? Well, Senator Warner, Senator Mark Warner, a Democrat from Virginia, is basically an adolescent. Uh, you will recall that recently at a uh, fundraiser cocktail party, he got a little drunk and started saying he had all kinds of secrets uh, that if he wanted to, he could release and really embarrass the president. That shows you the kind of juvenile mind that sits in the head of Mark Warner. Um, his performance as a United States Senator is not only awkward and unseemly, it's an embarrassment to the United States Senate, and he has brought, uh, he has brought, brought ill repute upon the Senate by his drunken statements at that party. He's also got a bad memory. Did he forget about the Clinton enemies list? Where did, what happened to that, and why didn't he mention that? Yeah. Well, he's, Sounds... he's nothing if not a, a swamp creature of convenience, I think we can <laughs> Indeed. say. Indeed. Uh, and it's easy for him, perhaps, to put out of his mind, but uh, the rest of us can't. Uh, his efforts with, uh, uh, with Waldman of Endeavor... 
the lobbying firm to try to uh, uh, back channel a contact with uh, uh, Steele, uh, Christopher yes. Steele, the MI6, former MI6 spy uh, who authored the, uh, the fake dossier that became this, this, well, the trigger, the tripping point, if you will, uh, for uh, the witch hunt uh, ad nauseum. Uh, hey, Lou, have you played Adam Schiff's conversation with the Russian humorist yet? <laughs> oh, that is, well, th that is, it is humorous uh, and delightful to hear him, you know, basically seeking from uh, the uh, the fraudulent call, pretending to be a, a, a Russian agent, if you will, uh, you know, pictures of uh, the president in compromising positions. I mean, to see his uh, both temperature and blood pressure rise uh, figuratively <laughs> speaking, uh, I didn't know Adam Schiff had it in him. Uh, but enough about Adam Schiff is uh, for at least tonight. <laughs> Victoria, thanks for being with us. Joe, thank you. We appreciate you both. You bet, Lou. Bye, Lou. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. The question is, do you think it's time to fire and revoke the security clearances of all FBI, Department of Justice, and intelligence agency officials involved in surveillance of the Trump campaign and the administration and certainly who empowered the phony Russia witch hunt. Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. We'd like to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs Tonight. Up next, closing arguments in the Paul Manafort trial. Greg Jarrett will join us here. We'll take that up. Much more straight ahead. Stay with us. Closing arguments today in the Paul Manafort trial, attorneys for the former Trump campaign manager ripping into the prosecution's star witness, Rick Gates, Manafort's partner, and accused them of fishing for a crime they couldn't prove. They also argued Manafort is on trial because of a cobbling of information by special counsel Robert Mueller seeking to destroy, as Judge T.S. Ellis said, the Trump presidency. Deliberation set to begin at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Joining us now to make sense of all that has transpired over these three weeks, Greg Jarrett, Fox Business Legal Analyst, author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Russia Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton and Frame Donald Trump. Congratulations uh, again, uh, maintaining that number one position. Three weeks in a row. And, and three weeks, I, couldn't, I didn't even have time. To say it, I mean, and already, <laughs> the man is hawking books here, I tell you. And we are delighted to be a co-conspirator in that. Uh, it's uh, it's over, uh, all but the deliberation and the verdict. How how do you, what do you, sense do you make of this uh, decision by the defense not to even present a case? Well, the media would have you believe that means they don't have a case, uh, which is completely untrue. Um, really good defense attorneys try to prove uh, their client's innocence or lack of guilt is the proper way to say it through cross-examination, which is the engine of truth. Um, and quite often you're the better off. Of truth. It is the engine of All truth. Right. It, if you are a good lawyer through leading questions, you can chip away at the, at the uh, credibility of a witness and impeach his previous statements. Uh, and that's what they tried to do. Look, they tried to show that Rick Gates, the star witness for the prosecution, is nothing more than a liar and a con artist and a bezeler and, and a thief. He's the one who managed uh, Manafort's uh, finances, and Manafort uh, was simply uh, acting without his knowledge. And it took, it's taken 12 days to get to this point. I, I'm frankly not sure where we are. Give us your best sense. I, 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 I find it interesting that the defense attorney said that they, uh, the prosecution should be handled by a, an IRS audit. I, I'm not right. even sure why there was not. The, well, and then you put that together with the, the suggestion on the part of the prosecutors uh, as they wrapped up their, uh, their, pro their closing arguments saying this is really a document trial and that Rick Gates uh, was not the star witness that yeah. they said was the star well, witness. Well, because Gates got that so beat up. The prosecution. Gates got so mauled on cross-examination by skilled defense attorneys for Manafort mm -hmm. that prosecutors had no choice. They had to say, uh, Rick Gates isn't the star witness. The documents are the star witness. That was their only out. It's pretty clear. This goes back to 2005 that Paul Manafort wouldn't have been on trial if he had not been 
uh, uh, the chairman for a few months of That's the right. Trump campaign for president. But if you're associated with President Trump, you're at legal risk for jaywalking. Why hasn't T.S. Uh, uh, Ellis just simply said, you know, get out of here. I was right to begin with. You guys are just working uh, to try to attack the president through well, Manafort. It, he implied early on in a pretrial hearing that that's exactly how he felt about it. But it's very difficult uh, for uh, a judge to actually dismiss a case in advance. They can do it after a, a verdict is rendered. Um, depending do you upon think whether... that he should? Because oh, it's clear what they're doing here. I, it, they, the prosecution. I think that the judge could make that decision, probably should. These are civil cases. Ninety percent of them are civil cases for t failure to pay taxes or tax evasion and so forth. And even on the rare criminal conviction, you do about a year and three months behind bars. But Who wins? Mueller wants to put this guy away for 305 years. He'll, he'll be dust. That's all he's got to show for a, a year and a half's work. Not much. And how many charges or prosecution have been brought for collusion? Zero. Who wins? Uh, I would say prosecutors will win some charges. There are 18 counts. They'll probably win on a few of them. Anything substantive? I don't know. What will be interesting is... Wait a minute. I don't know. It's unacceptable. It's, you're, you're it's, a it's impossible to know. It is impossible to know. But the judge has the ability to knock out some of the uh, charges if he's convicted and give him a light sentence. I say the truth, justice, and the American way will prevail. Greg Jarrett. Thank you. Being... All it takes is one juror to hang it up, and yeah. that's what the defense is trying and to I do. I've got to give Sidney Powell, former federal prosecutor, a lot of credit because on this broadcast, she made it very clear to, uh, to the Manafort attorneys what should be their strategy. She said it three times, <laughs> and she was the first I ever heard uh, say exactly that. Uh, Thank you. Great to have you here. Thank and you. we'll see how you fare on those charges. Thank you. Greg Jarrett, number one bestseller, The Russia Hoax. Up next, America and its values under attack. We'll show you the latest ridiculous and toxic remarks from Governor Andrew Cuomo and Hillary Clinton. You remember her. The Wall Street Journal's James Freeman joins me here next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo shocking even his left-wing supporters as he railed against President Trump's Make America Great Again motto. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. We have not reached greatness. We will reach greatness when every American is fully engaged. Unbelievable. The same governor who is shifting his policies and his rhetoric toward the socialist left, he's running left of himself now in his bid to be reelected. His press secretary, by the way, quickly trying to reverse uh, the mess that he created, releasing a statement that the governor believes America is great, even though he says it isn't great or not that great, or whatever he says. Hillary Clinton today voicing her support for Mariana Taylor, an 11-year-old sixth grader in Maryland who took a knee during the Pledge of Allegiance. Hillary tweeted this, quote, It takes courage to exercise your right to protest injustice, especially when you're 11. Keep up the good work, Mariana. Joining me now, Judge Janine Pirro, host of Justice with Judge Janine on the Fox News Channel, author of the number one New York Times best-selling book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. Judge, great to have you here. Good to be here, Lou. Uh, the Hillary Clinton comment to an 11-year-old, not even at the age of reason, uh, is to me abominable. Well, you know, I think they say the age of reason is seven. Uh, but aside from all that, I mean, Hillary Clinton doesn't know what reason is. And that's why she's promoting this, this 11 year old who took a knee. Look, it is fashionable right now, but it is also very damaging for these people to get up like Andrew Cuomo, Hillary Clinton, America isn't great, don't respect the flag, don't respect the, uh, the national anthem. This is despicable. It's a move toward the left, progressivism, socialism, and you know what? Keep moving, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to move right off the political spectrum in this country. 
Cuomo. I mean, he got basically booed by his own crowd there. He did. And America I got to tell you was something. Never that great. Who is this? Character? Well, first of all, he um, can barely he he can barely articulate his thoughts anyway. Well, but this was one thought he should not have articulated. His own father, Mario Cuomo, one of the greatest spokespeople and yep. statesmen, uh, said it, I don't know thirty years ago in one of his most famous speeches that America is the greatest country on earth. I mean, yep. is he willing to go toe to toe with his own father? Look, this is cheap. This is a willingness to sell your soul to get elected. And I got to tell you something. I ran against him for attorney general in New York State 2006, and I lost. All right. I have never criticized him. And they always come and say, what do you want to say? All I say is the guy won fair and square. Kind of. And, and so uh, by, he by did. By New York standards. Yes, by New York standards. And I have never said a word about him. But this was despicable. Yeah, it, 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 it's just awful. It, it's awful, the, the message that is emanating from the left. I mean, this is this is the, these are the luminaries of the left in this country. Andrew Cuomo, uh, Hillary Clinton. My God, what does it take? Uh, Bernie Sanders. What is it? And now uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio uh, Cortez. Cortez. Yeah. I, I mean, well, what are they doing? What he was saying was it won't be great until everyone is fully engaged. What does that mean, fully engaged? We've got all kinds he, of. He couldn't even explain it. No, I mean, does it mean you should be engaged? Should you have a diamond ring on your finger? What does it mean? (laughs) It means uh, the same thing as participate. You know, it's a participatory. Well, but no, they want the rhetoric of the left. Yeah, but they want the illegals to participate. They want people who are criminals to participate. They don't care. They just want to get elected. It's wrong. I'm telling you, Lou, it's wrong. (laughs) It's wrong, uh, but it's the left, and there it is. Judge, it's great to have you with us. Good to be with you, Lou. Thank you, Janine Pirro. Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, number one bestseller, Saturday nights at 9 p.m. on the Fox News channel, Judge Kenny. Be sure to join her. Be sure to vote in tonight's poll as well. Do you think it's time to fire and revoke the security clearances of all FBI, DOJ, and intelligence officials involved in the surveillance of the Trump campaign and the phony Russia witch hunt? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. As Florida public schools return to session this week, get ready for this. The state's motto, in God we trust, will be on full display in their public schools. The statute, part of an education bill signed earlier this year by Governor Rick Scott, it states that each school district is required to display the motto in all of its schools and in each building used by the district school board. Good for you, Florida. Up next, Democrats distance themselves from, guess who, Nancy Pelosi. We take up the radical Dems Pelosi problem with the Wall Street Journal's James Freeman. Right after this, stay with us. We'll be right back. Senator Bernie Sanders taking a shot at the Republican Party today after he was asked about Nancy Pelosi's leadership. Yeah, I think Nancy has done a good job. Now, let me say what she may not say. I think it's also the fact that she's a woman. Uh, I think they have demonized her. The Republican Party is bankrupt intellectually. Morally, I mean, the, the list of cliches spewed by the senator go on and on. What the senator didn't say was how much Republicans don't really care what happens with Pelosi. In fact, most Republicans would rather she stay in a position of preeminent leadership in the Democratic Party. Joining me now, James Freeman. He's the assistant editor at the Wall Street Journal, Fox Business contributor, and co-author, co-author of his newly released book, Borrowed Time, Two Centuries of Booms, Busts, and Bailouts at City. Yes, great sir. to have you with us. Congratulations. Great to be back. Thanks, Luke. You're doing great and appreciate it. Love it. And recommend it to you highly. Thank uh, you. Let, let's start with the, the left wing nonsense today, and much of it centered in New York. Governor Cuomo yeah. saying the country was never that great. Uh, Hillary Clinton uh, anointing a, an 11 year old child for kneeling during the Pledge of Allegiance. The left seems to have gone, well, loony. It's uh, it's quite a pattern here. I mean, you you want to say it's a gaffe, and uh, you mentioned uh, Mr. Cuomo's press secretary trying to clean up the mess well, afterwards. And maybe, America is great. America is great. Maybe he'll come out tomorrow and say how much he deeply regrets it. But it's a uh, a problem in the Democratic Party. This is kind of a theme here in the last ten years of 
a large uh, part of that party's leadership thinking America is not so great, whether it's Barack Obama questioning American exceptionalism right. or uh, him and uh, or Mr. Obama and Elizabeth Warren with the whole you didn't build that theme, basically really attacking the fabric of American you know, business creation. Years, we had in this country a president who kept apologizing to yeah, our allies, right, our the friends, apology and tour. enemies alike uh, uh, for America. And, and Americans for eight years walking around in this uh, atmosphere of gloom and doom and negativity that had all been conjured by this president who got elected talking about hope and change for crying out loud. Yeah, and, and for Cuomo, I think it's a, it's a particular problem now as he thinks about running in 2020. The premise of his candidacy was going to be, I'm not a crazy leftist. I'm more of a moderate in the party. His, his, Chuck that. The, the, yeah, well, the idea was maybe you're going to appeal to people who don't hate America. And that's, that's a little tougher now. Yeah, it, it is hard to discern a single figure within the Democratic Party right now in any preeminent role at all uh, who is talking about a vision that is bright and hopeful. Uh, that is something that uh, e even the most negative of uh, the the left, and that's very negative, as you know, indeed, could uh, latch on to. Uh, yeah. There's just no sense of the future that is uh, that that any one of these candidates or luminaries who want to be candidates uh, are is articulating. Yeah, I think there are moderates within the party who probably could give. Donald Trump, a very tough matchup in 2020, but you look at the... Do you have anybody in mind? I, I, maybe someone like uh, John Hickenlooper wrapping up his uh, time as Colorado's governor, but I don't, I don't think any... Speaking of left, by I, the way, I, I don't do you think, consider Hickenlooper moderate? We're talking on a relative okay, basis. I got it. I, got I don't... And I, but I don't think any sort of moderate candidate is likely to get through their nomination process, and for that reason, I think... Trump probably wins again in 2020, not because the whole country loves him, but because people realize that the alternative is just not acceptable. Wait, what are your thoughts? I, I mean, this suddenly the fake news is really coming together as a group. Uh, the Boston Globe <laughs> creating this uh, uh, cooperative of uh, like-minded left-wingers to have a, a special day uh, to rail against the president. Now, I must have missed something because I think they've been railing against the president every day and every way for our, uh, since the day he uh, looked like he was going to be the nominee. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call it all fake news, but I think for anyone who you want, you want who, to take, I'll take down your three exceptions. <laughs> no, for for anyone who thinks that the media is kind of this cabal, uh, yeah. all having uh, abandoned objective journalism in favor of becoming adversaries of Donald Trump and thinks they're all working together to stop him for a group of newspapers to announce on Thursday we're all going to say roughly the same thing is just remarkable. Which they've been doing throughout. Well, it, 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 well this is the other thing. I mean, who, who was unclear on what the Boston right. Globe's thinking was about Donald Trump? I'm not sure they had to, this Thursday, to let us they're know. Going, they're, they're going to send out a memo. Right. Uh, that will only go to 300 and some odd newspapers, apparently, rather than all newspapers. And I, you can count, I think, on uh, both hands, the newspapers who actually support the president of the United States right now. Not many. Not We're many. And about an orthodoxy, a, a hidebound orthodoxy. That's what has been created on, on the left. They have joined uh, with the rhinos of the, uh, of, you know, the Republican Party uh, and conservatives. I, you know, are left pretty much standing alone. Yeah, I think um, I don't think this is going to be effective. I'm not sure what the the uh, strategy was here. I don't think you're going to change a lot How about of minds slowing with down this approach the death of newspapers. I mean, you would think well, they would, they would see that as <laughs> they must think they're competing with uh, one another rather than uh, they're calling a truce here for the cabal. Uh, but and they don't understand they're competing with technology, uh, television. Uh, and, right. uh, streaming uh, the web and the digital universe. Well, I think the fundamental problem is they're doing this because they think the president in criticizing them is somehow stifling their First Amendment rights. And I, I think there's a confusion that that they think the First Amendment says the government isn't allowed to criticize them. And, and of course, that's not what it says at all. He has 
free speech rights just like they do. And when you look at the record, the bigger threat to the First I'd Amendment. I'd much rather hear from the president than them, any one yeah. of them, any day. I, by the way, and I he's don't not know. investigating the way President Obama did, and he's not trying oh, to yeah. gut the First Amendment the way right. Hillary Clinton did with the, uh, A very the good desire point. to bring back Citizens United. It's it's good to see, uh, you know, it's good to be reminded of the uh, the Obama uh, administration's pension for spying on journalists. Yeah. Uh, the Associated Press has forgotten all of that. But uh, you luckily, wonder why. I mean, where was the joint editorial about that or about uh, yeah. it, with this network, James Rosen? Uh, this, this was a very aggressive effort to go after the press. And uh, Eric Holder, who I understand is still musing about whether or not he wants to run for president. Uh, as with you know, Nancy Pelosi, I just want you to know I support that idea. Uh, vigorously. Uh, I, I don't know about you, James, but I'm one of those I'd people. like to know what he thinks about the greatness of America. Maybe uh, maybe they should all get on the record with the Cuomo question. Uh, you know, the great thing about the, the record on uh, all of them, uh, the record will change and it will be revised as they wish, uh, if uh, experience is any indicator. I can't wait, and I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see what President Trump has to say uh, about that uh, uh, newspaper conference uh, in concert on one day, uh, he'll probably think he got a break. Uh, only 300 of them working against him on one day. Well, the, uh, the media the honeymoon has officially off. ended. I think we can say that for sure. You got it. James Freeman, thanks for being here. Thanks, the book Luke. is Borrowed Time. We uh, urge you to buy it. We recommend it to you highly. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lou. The U.S. Treasury, increasing pressure on North Korea to give up its weapons program today. The Treasury adding new sanctions aimed at Chinese and Russian shipping companies that are aiding North Korean shipping and selling alcohol and tobacco to North Korea. A suicide bomber killing at least 48 people today in the Afghan capital of Kabul. The bomber targeted an education center where students were studying for university entrance exams. ISIS being blamed for the attack. It comes just days after the surprise Taliban attacks uh, in the northern part of the country, some 75 miles uh, from Kabul. Up next, former Obama uh, CIA chief John Brennan has his security clearance lifted. We take a look at who else could be losing their clearances right after this break. We'll be right back. It was quite a day on Wall Street. Stocks closing lower. The Dow down 138 points, but recovering well from its uh, deepest losses. The S&P down 22. The Nasdaq fell 97. Volume on the big board, 3.6 billion shares. Tesla now under fire for CEO Elon Musk's erratic tweeting and the company's controversial board of directors. That board, by the way, includes uh, Elon Musk's brother, Kimball, as well as SpaceX directors Antonio Gracias and Steve Jerpinson. And a reminder to listen to my reports three times a day, coast to coast on the Salem Radio Network. Well, this is where we are today and what we're looking at uh, for tomorrow. The Trump administration revoking the security clearance of uh, President Obama's CIA director, John Brennan. The security clearances of nine others are now under review by the Trump administration. Attorney Joe DeGeneva joined us tonight and had this blunt assessment. This is a glorious moment for the country. Uh, an evil man has lost something that he's not entitled to. John Brennan is the worst CIA director in the history of this country. Dems off the deep end, Governor Andrew Cuomo in particular. Governor Cuomo claimed today America was never that great. Hillary Clinton praising a child who took a knee during the Pledge of Allegiance. She's 11 years old. Judge Jeanine Pirro telling us it's all part of the despicable move of the left to move to the left right off the political spectrum. And we'll be on Verdict Watch tomorrow as deliberations begin in the trial of Paul Manafort. Greg Jarrett predicting prosecutors will win on some charges, but points out all it takes is one juror to hang the whole jury and put the case uh, aside. That's it for us tonight. We thank you for being with us. Please join us here tomorrow. Conversations with Harmeet Dillon.
and Judicial Watch's Chris Farrell. And be sure to join me on Tucker Carlson this very evening. I join Tucker in just moments, just moments, I tell you, on the Fox News Channel. Thanks for being with us. Good night from New York.